predictions about the result of uh, price competition among small number of firms in oligopoly markets. Also, you should be able to ex explain the choice of strategic variables by oligopolies. So before going into much detail on the uh, oligopolies, so we need to first know what uh, what is market concentration. The concentration ratio is the percentage of the uh, market's total output supplied by its four largest firms. The higher the concentration ratio, there will be less competition in the market. This chapter of oligopoly uh, is the market structure with high concentration ratios. That means uh, the uh, market share of the uh, four largest firms in the market will be uh, relatively high in oligopolies. Uh, such industries uh, in the world uh, or in the U U.S. market include uh, video game consoles, uh, tennis. Uh, for, for example, in video games as well, there are a few key players such as uh, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Nintendo, and those things. Uh, so there are a few key players in the video games console market. The same with credit cards. Uh, for example, in credit cards, the most known one is the Visa cards, and they can express MasterCard. So these uh, 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 these uh, large firms actually control a huge part of the uh, credit cards market. So oligopoly uh, is a market structure dominated by few large producers of homogeneous or differentiated products. Because of their fewness, oligopolies have considerable control over their price. Some characteristics of an oligopoly include uh, there will be few firms, not many, not one, but there will be few firms. Their product can either be standardized or differentiated. It can either be identical products or differentiated products. So there are significant obstacles or barriers to enter the market in oligopolies, similar to monopolies. So uh, as for the considerable uh, control over the price, it depends on what type of oligopolies they are operating in. So if they are in a mutual interdependence uh, one, then there will be a limited control over the price, but they are in a colluded market or in a collusion, then there will be a considerable price of over the price. Uh, so as for the non-price competition, it is typically a great deal, particularly with product differentiation in these types of uh, markets. So as I have uh, mentioned before, uh, steel industry, automobiles, tires, cigarettes, BS, uh, video consoles, and the, these types of uh, markets are actually uh, operating in oligopolies. For example, in the case of Maldives, it could be the telecom industry here. So there are very few firms in the market uh, who has a, a larger market share. Uh, we can say the same about the banking industry uh, here as well, because there are a few banks who are uh, the largest four have uh, a huge share of the market in the banking sector as well. So a key characteristic of oligopolies is that each firm can affect the market, making each firm's choices dependent on the choices of the other firms. They are interdependent on each other. So one firm uh, operating in oligopoly can affect the market and they can be affected by the firms, uh, other firms' choices as well. So they are interdependent. So there is strategic behavior involved in oligopolies. A firm's decision about price and quantity can affect other firms and cause them to react. The firms will consider these reactions of other firms when making decisions. So this part is very important in uh, oligopoly. 
they will consider the re reactions of other firms when making decisions. So there are different models used to describe behaviors in the oligopolies. Uh, so there are price leadership models. There are king demand curve models. There are collusions and cartels. And there's game theory. So I'll go through each of these in more detail. Price leadership uh, is a form of oligopoly in which one dominant firm sets prices and all the smaller firms in the industry follow its pricing policy. Assumptions of price uh, leadership model is the industry is made up of one large firm and a number of smaller competitive firms. The dominant firm maximizes profit uh, subject to the uh, constraint of market demand and subject to the behavior of smaller firms. So uh, dominant firms maximizing profit uh, is subject to the constraints in the market demand side and also subject to the behavior of the smaller firms as well. The dominant firm allows smaller firms to sell all they want at the price the leader has set. So the dominant firm does not crowd out the smaller firms, but they do allow smaller firms to sell, but at the price set by the dominant firm. In the king demand curve model, uh, oligopolies face a demand curve based on the assumption that drivers will ignore a price increase and allow a price follow a price decrease. So an oligopolis rival will ignore a price increase above the going price, but follow a price decrease below the going price. So for example, if this is the going price, the P level P is the going price. And if they increase the uh, price above that, then the rivals will ignore it. Yeah. For example, this is the main, uh, the uh, DF is the main demand curve. Yeah, so they were operating in this demand curve. And let's say if the uh, uh, if a firm increases the price, then the market does not obtain it. But if they decrease the price, then the market uh, adopts it. So in that, because of that, the demand curve is kinked after a particular point where the price uh, is decreased below the going price. The demand curve is kinked at the price and the marginal revenue curve has a vertical gap in between. So I'll show that in a while. Uh, so here, in order to maximize profits, we use the market marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost curve. Cost, the, the same rule. Uh, the marginal revenue uh, curve for kink demand curve is discontinuous at the kink. So here is the kink level. So at this kink point, there is a discontinuity in the marginal revenue curve. So there is a huge gap here. Yeah. So this gap uh, is uh, caused by the kink uh, in the demand curve. This leads the firms to charge the same price even if costs change. So the cost is now changed, but this allows them to charge the same price. Uh, because of this. So another one is collusion and cartels. Collusion usually refers to hidden and illegal agreements to set prices, output levels, or geographical regions among firms. A cartel is a combination of firms that act uh, as it were a single firm and uh, is a shared monopoly. So with the collusion, of the firms in the market can create a cartel where they will work as a single firm and have a shared monopoly. In the cartel model, an oligopoly sets a monopoly price. So cartel and heavy amivavati, they are getting the monopoly power to set the price in the market. A cartel members may agree on issues such as prices, total industry output, market share, and division of profits. 
So, Carter in Hadaf, then a Carter Terega, we have a farm stack at Terega, they will decide what will be the price they are, they are going to sell, what will be the total amount of the food they will be selling in the market, and of this total amount, what will be the amount which will be produced or and sold by a single firm in the cartel, and how will they divide the profits of these firms in the cartel? If oligopolies can limit in entry, they have a strong incentive to collude. Yeah. So if they can uh, limit the entry by collusion, then they have a strong uh, incentive to collude and form a cartel. To collude to get uh, together with other firms to set price or allocate market share. So factors affecting collusion include the number and the size distribution of sellers. Collusion is more successful with few firms and if there exists a dominant firm. Product heterogeneity. Collusion is more successful with products that are standardized or homogeneous. So if the products are uh, heterogeneous, uh, meaning if products are differentiated, then uh, collusion is more difficult as opposed to the products being homogeneous. Post structures uh, is also a factor which affects the collusion. Collusion is more successful when the costs are similar for all the firms in the oligopoly. So if a one particular firm can produce at a much lower quantity, then that uh, much lower cost, then that firm will not be incentivized to uh, collude with the other firms who can, who will have to incur a higher cost to produce the product. The size and the frequency of orders uh, also uh, affects the collusion. So uh, collusion is more successful with small and frequent orders. One thing could be the drug smart. No. Secrecy and retaliation. Uh, Collusion is more successful when it is uh, difficult to uh, give secret price concessions. Collusion is more uh, successful when percentage of orders outside the cartel is small. So if the cartel can be formed with a larger number of uh, sellers in the market, then it will be more successful they are, but if there are more uh, firms outside the cartel, then the successfulness of the collusion in the cartel will be lower. Uh, Rifka, you ask, sir, is there a question? <laughs> So, what's the question? Yeah, it could be, yes. It's, of, it's for you guys to decide, yes. So, the profit maximizing uh, of a cartel is uh, a cartel can act just like a monopolist would, uh, it can maximize total industry profits. Total industry profits are maximized by the setting uh, total industry output and price at the level where industry marginal revenue equals industry marginal cost. So let's say uh, uh, this is firm A, which is in the uh, cartel. Which this is firm F, which is which can also be in the cartel, and then we have. Uh, the cartel output level. So uh, even though <clears throat> there are different marginal revenue, marginal costs, and average costs for uh, firms uh, singly, 
So, but uh, in a harder, what they try to do is they try to maximize the profit uh, of the uh, overall industry and then share that profit. So they set the uh, marginal revenue is uh, uh, this. They supply the quantity or produce the quantity. Uh, so, yeah, uh, but, uh, it, uh, in the market, they, uh, they set aware of for the whole industry, they set the marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, and then they go, go up to the uh, uh, demand curve and set the price at that point. So now, because the price is higher for uh, higher, in this case, uh, for both firms, now they can make uh, profits even though their average total cost is different. Uh, uh, you were saying, uh, uh, Rifka, you were saying the leadership part uh, said there are domain firms and more firms. Uh, so that is for, uh, did, uh, as I will explain uh, in ex uh, oligopolis, there are different models. So I am going through different models. So even though they do not uh, fall into a price leadership model, they might fall into another type of, uh, another model of uh, oligopoly. Industries marginal cost is obtained by summing up the uh, in individual firms marginal cost, similar to what is done in uh, a perfect competition where we add all the supplies of single firms to get the market uh, supply. So uh, let's go through an example. Uh, let's go through an example uh, on cell phone duopoly in a small town. Yeah, let's say in a small town there are 140 residents. The good in this case is the cell phone service, which uh, with unlimited anytime minutes and free phone. The small town uh, towns demand schedule is uh, like this, uh, where at, at any any given price the quantity is given as you can see as the price increases the quantity demanded falls so there is a downward sloping demand curve for the small towns are uh, uh, demand for cell phone there are two firms uh, operating in the uh, market uh, that is t-mobile and verizon uh, so when there is an oligopoly with only two firms we call it a duopoly yeah keep that in mind if there are two firms uh, in an oligopoly, we call it a duopoly. Awesome. Each firm's cost is uh, where they have fixed cost of zero and a uh, marginal cost of $10. So their revenue is simply the price into the quantity uh, and you get the total revenue at each quantity. Their cost is, uh, uh, again, their fixed cost was zero, but their marginal cost is $10. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is their cost involved. So you just simply multiply the uh, quantity into the marginal quant uh, uh, cost that was uh, given before, that is $10. So the profit is the difference between the total revenue and the total cost. So where you can see that profit is equal to zero at quantity 120. And as you increase the, uh, 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 as you increase the quantity, you can see the, uh, it is increasing until some point, uh, until uh, the quantity 60. And uh, when the quantity is uh, 50, you are now making again, uh, a lower profit. So, competitive uh, outcome like Vijayamun, they will be producing the quantity where the price is equal to the marginal cost. That is, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So, that would be uh, where the, at the quantity 120. <coughs> so, with price 10, sorry, uh, I have written uh, zero by mistake. So uh, at the price 10, uh, quantity 120, that will be what they'll be working in a perfectly competitive market. But in a 
monopoly what they will do is they will charge the uh, quantity where the uh, uh, with the highest profit they can make yeah so they sell a much lower quantity at a much higher price if it is a monopoly as opposed to a perfectly competitive market one possible duopoly out outcome is collusion Pollution and agree is an agreement among firms in the market about quantities to produce or prices to charge. T-Mobile and Verizon could agree to each produce half of the monopoly output. Each firm, in that case, will uh, uh, produce uh, 30 uh, uh, cell phones and sell each at uh, $40 and make a profit of 900 So if you remember from the previous sell, uh, slide, the uh, monopoly profit was 1800 so so this from this 1800 uh, they are dividing the uh, profit among them equally by collusion another one could be a cartel a group of firms acting in unison uh, t mobile and verizon in the uh, verizon uh, in the you know, outcome with collusion so that could be uh with uh, cartel is a result of pollution so that will be the case so what will happen in uh, in the collusion versus a self interest firm so duopoly outcome with uh, collusion is that each firm agrees to produce quantity 30 uh, and earns a profit of 900 uh, so Masa is saying you can't hear me. Can others hear me? So yeah, so Masa should could be a problem with your internet or the device you are using to hear. So let me continue. Uh, Masa, you can try to solve it. I'll continue with the slides. If T-Mobile re reneges on the agreement and produces uh, quantity 40, what happens to the market price? What And what happens to T-Mobile's profits? So previously, I talked about the both both of these firms, uh, T-Mobile and Verizon are colluding and producing uh, equal amount of quantity and sharing the profits equally. So what if the T-Mobile actually goes against their agreement and produces quantity 40 uh, so what will happen to the market price and the mobile's profits so the market quantity will now be 70 because under the agreement verizon will still be producing 30 but uh e-mobile is cheating and now producing 40. so now because of that the pr uh, price now the quantity is 70 so because of that now the price in the market is falling to 35 yeah as opposed to previous 40 dollars with quantity 60. so the team Uh, their agreement and each produce 40 now what will happen to the market okay. uh, can you hear me now All right. Uh, so, if both firms renege and uh, each produce uh, forty, what will happen to the each firm's product? Uh, each firm's uh, profit. 
so what will happen is now that both firm are producing uh quantity 40 that means the total market quantity will be 80 so, so the total market quantity is now 80 cell phones leading to uh, the price fall in the market to $30. So each firm will now make a profit of only 800 as opposed to previous 900 which they were making under the collusion agreement. Yeah. Us. Yes, uh, those who cannot hear, could you please try? Uh, yes, uh, I have written it up. Uh, if you cannot hear for a while, try rejoining. So now, because both the firms are going against uh, against their agreement of the coalition, both firms are now making a lower profit as opposed to before. So both firms would be better off if both stick to the cartel agreement, but each firm has incentive to renege the agreement, singly talking. So lesson is, is it, it is difficult for oligopoly firms to form cartels and honor their agreements. So even though they do form a cartel, they are, will be incentive, incentive, uh, they will be incentivized to dishonor the agreement and produce a quantity which is higher than their agreed amount. So due to this, both of the firms will now be uh, faced with a lower profit as opposed to the amount they can get in the pollution. So the oligopoly equilibrium, if each firm produces quantity 40, market quantity is 80, price is equal to 30, and each firm makes a profit of 800. Is it in T-Mobile's interest to increase its uh, output further to quantity 50? So let's say their equilibrium was uh, uh, 40 and producing it uh, at the price of 30 and making $800 profit. So if uh, T-Mobile uh, increases their output to 50, uh, while Verizon uh, uh, remains at 40, the total market quantity will be now $90 and the price will fall to $25. And the T-Mobile's profit is now lower than the profit they would have earned under the previous level of 800. So it becomes 750 now. <clears throat> so is it in Verizon's interest to increase its output to quantity 50? The same impact will happen uh, as the T-Mobile's uh, T would uh, uh, case so they will not be incentivized to uh, increase the quantity in that case. So the equilibrium of an oligopoly, uh, Nash equilibrium is a really important thing for you guys to remember uh, for assignment as well. So a Nash equilibrium is a situation in which economic participants interacting with each other, uh, uh, with one another, each choose their best strategy given the strategies that all others have chosen. 
so uh, in the mark in in in, uh, in the market uh, ehen firms the noni market ehen participants in choose pura h sub base go for what could be your best uh, strategy uh, to follow so that is the nash equilibrium our duopoly example has nash equilibrium in which each firm produces quantity 40 that is by seeing that uh, the best option for both of them is the uh, producing at quantity 30 where they could have each got uh, a profit of 900 but given that uh, there is a chance for another person to increase their quantity and get a higher price of a uh, higher higher profit of 1000 then the other firm will also be incentivized to increase their quantity so that's why it is called Nash equilibrium. Given that Verizon produces quantity 40, T-Mobile's best move is to produce quantity 40 as well. So given that with the decision by uh, one firm, the best option for the other firm is to follow them. So game theory is the another model in 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 game theory we use Nash equilibrium so uh, so i will explain it more in detail game theory is concerned with how individuals make decisions when they are aware that their actions affect each other and when each individual takes into takes this into account so ekakoge decision anekakan effect kurakan again jamum engi hure then ekanta take into account of game theory. I'll show you a good example. Uh, so this uh, game theory was developed by uh, this uh, Beaman and uh, Fernandez. So he got a Nobel Prize for this as well. So it will be good to uh, look into it. There is a movie made uh, for that this for this event. I think it's called Beautiful Mind. So game theory helps us understand oligopoly and other situations where players interact. Have, uh, so they will have mutual interdependence with each other and behave in a strategic manner. In the game theory, there is the dominant strategy, which is the strategy that is best for a player in the game, regardless of the strategies chosen by other players. Yeah. So that is without taking into account of the choices made by the other players. Prisoner's dilemma. So this is mainly used to explain it. Uh, uh, the game theory, a game between two captured criminals that illustrates why cooperation is difficult even when in a mutually beneficial situation. So, giving you a, a prisoner's uh, dilemma, uh, let's say a police have caught Bonnie and Clyde, these are two famous uh, uh, bank robbers, but only have enough evidence to imprison each for one year. The police question each in separate rooms, offer each the following deal. So, they are kept in two separate rooms and they are offered deals such that each one will not be. Uh, knowing what will be the decision made by the other one. So if you, so it, the, the police says, if you confess and implicate your partner, you will go free. And if you do not confess, but your partner confess, uh, 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 if your partner implicates you, you will get 20 uh, years in the prison. If you both confess, each will get eight years in the prison. So if we put in a uh, matrix, let's say one option for uh, them to be uh, bony, uh, let's say if bony, uh, bony's decision is to confess, they will get 80 years uh, if Clyde also confesses. But if uh, <coughs> So if they both confess together, then they will each get 80 years in the prison. But if uh, 
Clyde confesses, he will uh, go free and Bonnie will get uh, $20, uh, so 20 years in the prison. And if Bonnie confesses, uh, Bonnie will go free and Clyde will get 20 years in prison. And the best option for both of them to is actually remain silent so that uh, police will have only uh, evidence enough for uh, each of them to be prison for only one year. So the dominant strategy for each players in this case is confessing, yeah, because they don't know what the other person will do. For example, uh, even though it is best for the both of them to uh, remain silent, they don't know what the other person would do. So, for example, if even though uh, Bonnie wanted to remain silent, uh, in that case, if Clyde uh, confesses, then Bonnie will be charged with a 20 year sentence. So that is not good for Bonnie. So the similar case will be if Clyde remains to si uh, remain silent and Bonnie confesses. So the dominant strategy is both of them to confess and each serve a sentence of eight years, which is not the best option though. So the dominant strategy option is the Nash equilibrium in this case because this uh, this uh, decision is made by taking into account what might the other person do. So the outcome will be Bonnie and Clyde both confess and each will get eight years in prison. But as I have been saying before, both would have been better off. Uh, if they both remain silent and it will get only one year in prison. But even if Bonnie and Clyde had agreed before being caught to remain silent, the logic of self-interest takes over and leads them to confess. So this is prisoner's dilemma. So even though they have agreed before, their self-interest will take over and they will take into account what might the other person do and then each person will end up on the choosing the dominant strategy, which is not the best option for them. So if we uh, put oligopolies in the context of prisoners dilemma, when oligopolies form a cartel in hopes of reaching the monopoly outcome, they, keep, they become players in prisoners dilemma. Yeah. Our earlier example, in which T-Mobile and Verizon are the police in small town. The cartel outcome uh, maximizes profits. Each uh, firm agrees to serve quantity 30 uh, for customers. So this would have been the best option for them. Uh, and so this is actually the best option for them. But their self-interest and what might the other person in the cartel do will not them not let them remain in this best option for them. So if we draw it in the pair of metrics, just like before, uh, <clears throat> so this is what we'll get. Uh, so if they both, uh, if they both uh, actually uh, serves quantity 30 to the market, each of them will get $900 of profit. But there is a risk uh, of for Verizon to, uh, 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 because T-Mobile might increase their quantity to forty and earn a higher price of higher profit of one thousand five, then the Verizon's profit will be lower now. The same could happen to T-Mobile as well. Even though T-Mobile might decide to uh, produce thirty, uh, but if the Verizon goes against their deal and produce quantity forty. Then the Verizon will now make a profit of uh, 1,000 and T-Mobile will be left off with only 750. So in that case, uh, both of the firms uh, uh, will decide to increase their quantity. Both will increase their quantity to 40 and this will be the dominant strategy. Yeah, so this will be the dominant strategy for them because they are now taking into account the uh, uh, 
they are now taking into the account of uh, what might the other person in the cartel do or the, what might the other company do. So uh, by taking into that account and adopting this uh, dominant strategy, both of the companies are actually letting go of the best option they have of making each 900. Uh, and now they are making only a profit of 800. So in this case, this dominant strategy is the mesh equilibrium in the uh, uh, duopolist market. So in real world examples, firms play price fixing games repeatedly. Yeah, they keep on repeatedly doing this uh, each time. So. If a game is played repeatedly, one player has the opportunity to penalize the other player for previous bad behavior. Yeah. For example, in the case of mortgages, if one, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I will give you guys an example of Dirab and Uridu. Let's say they, they, they both have a, a price fixing game. And let's say in the first week, Dirabu went against their agreement. And uh, uh, charged a lower price so that they can earn a higher price. But uh, in the next week, there will be a chance for Uridu to do the same and go behind Diragu's back and uh, get a higher profit. So what happens if, if one uh, cheat in this week and the other cheat the next week? What is the equilibrium of such a complicated prisoner's dilemma? So it is going on repeatedly. So what will be the equilibrium in such a case? Possibilities are many. Yeah, so let con uh, let's consider uh, a cooperative equilibrium. A cooperative equilibrium is an equilibrium in which the players make and share the monopoly profit. So basically, uh, that is uh, having a, a cartel. A cooperative uh, equilibrium may occur if each player knows that the other player will punish cheating. Yeah, so if they know they will be punished for cheating, then they will cooperate in the agreement they have uh, made so there are two extremes of punishment one is a uh, called a tip for tap strategy and the tri and there is trigger strategy trigger strategy is mainly yeah so trigger strategy is mainly all firms being uh, abiding by the agreement so far as all firms are being cooperative yeah so as long as every firm in the uh, in the industry is in the cartel in all in the agreement is being cooperative, they will remain uh, true to the agreement. But once one single firm or once one firm goes against the uh, against their agreement, then what will happen is they will be triggered and they will start teaching, uh, cheating again. Yeah. So that's called a trigger strategy. Think. A tit for test strategy is in duopoly game between two firms. A tit for test strategy keeps both players cooperating and earning uh, monopoly profits. What is true for one firm holds true for another firm. And because each firm makes larger profit by sticking to the collision agreement or cartel agreement, both firms do so and monopoly price and quantity profits prevail so if they keep on uh, being abiding by the agreement then they will be able to take advantage of a larger profit but uh, it for uh, uh, yeah so uh, once uh, one uh, firm cheats then another firm will cheat then again another firm will cheat let's go keep for it doing what you have done punishing for being cheated uh in the previous week so that will keep on repeating so looking at oligopolis and other strategic variables uh product differentiation is important in oligopolis as well by innovation and spending huge expenditures on mar marketing a firm may differentiate its product 
Advertise in and other selling costs remain fixed. Advertise in increases sales large enough to reduce the average total cost. So I have explained this in the previous uh, slides. Uh, advertising games uh, also occurs. Firms engage in costly advertising campaign, hoping that it could increase their profit, knowing, uh, not knowing how the competitor or market may react. So this is something uh, similar to the price uh, worst they have. They can have uh, uh, costly advertising campaigns in order to uh, uh, increase their profits uh, as opposed to the uh, another firm. So there are contestable marks. One or few firms operate, but there are no entry or exit barriers. Example, market for arrivals, uh, air, air travels. So even though uh, there are no entries or exit to the mar uh, market, there are few firms operating mainly because of the costs uh, in, involved. Uh, so quite similar to natural monopolies, but uh, as opposed to a monopoly, now there are few firms in this case. Each will have a considerable power in the market. So there is entry difference game. The objective of a new firm is to enter and set the price to compete with the existing firm. So in such a case, the new firm will make an innovative move to make a difference in the market and get a uh, price, uh, get a competitive the uh, competitive price as opposed to uh, the existing firms. So uh, like uh, monopolies, there are some public policies towards oligopolies. So <clears throat> so I have, I, I have said uh, in the first, first lecture that governments can sometimes improve market outcomes. In oligopolies, production is too low and prices are too high. The same as a monopoly uh, related to the social uh, optimum or the efficient level. So in that case, policy makers can promote competition, prevent cooperation of uh, to move the oligopoly output uh, outcome closer to the uh, efficient outcome. Uh, so uh, to they can promote uh, competition uh, by allowing new firms to enter the market, or uh, they can. Uh, do the, do so to actually demolish the existing cartels as well because if the firms outside the cartel are more compared to the firms inside the cartel then in that case the cartel will not be profitable so they will have to demolish the cartel if there are more firms allowed into the market so policy makers make such can make such regulations uh, or uh, give licenses as well so I have explained to you guys Sherman Antitrust uh, Act and Clayton Antitrust Act uh, uh, in, in Monopoly. So Sherman Antitrust Act uh, forbids collusion between competitors. And uh, Clayton Antitrust Act uh, strengthens uh, ten rights of individuals uh, damaged by anti-competitive arrangements between firms. So uh, in the... 1980, uh, 1890 Sherman Act, they actually forbid solution. Then the Clayton Act actually uh, uh, gives some rights and strengthens the, uh, strengthens the rights of individuals who are who gets damages due to existence of these collusions and such arrangements. So the However, there are some controversies over antitrust policies. This is most people agree that price fixing agreements among competitors should be illegal. Most people do agree that, but some economists are concerned that policymakers go too far when using antitrust laws to uh, stifle business practices that are not necessarily harmful and may have legitimate objectives as well. So, some economists says that. Uh, uh, the policymakers go too far uh, and they do not draw the line, so the line becomes blur. So that is a controversial uh, uh, opinion over the antitrust policies of X. So to conclude, I will give you a summary that is oligopolies can, uh, can maximize profits if they form a cartel and act like a monopolist. So they do have that choice. However, the self-interest leads each oligopolis 
to a higher quantity and lower price than under a monopoly outcome. So oligopolists cannot make as much profits as a monopolies because of their self-interest. The larger the number of firms, the closer will be uh, the quantity and the price to the levels that would prevail under competition. So, they, so if there are many firms, uh, if there are more firms, then it will get closer to a perfectly competitive market. But uh, having a smaller number of uh, firms will make it closer to a monopolist market. The prisoners dilemmas the self-interest can prevent people from cooperating, even when cooperation is in their mutual interest. Even though if they cooperate, uh, cooperate and stick by uh, stick to their previous agreements is beneficial for them, uh, for both of them, uh, then in that case, uh, but the mutual uh, their self-interest prevents them from cooperating. The logic of the prisoner's dilemma applies in many situations in life, in many situations in the markets as well. So policymakers use antitrust laws to prevent oligopolies from engaging in such collusions, behaviors, and price fixing. But the application of these laws in sometimes are controversial because of the extent the uh, policymakers Let's eat. Uh, that's it for the topic. Uh, so, if you guys have any question, please let me know.